Talk to us about how IOST, you believe, fits into the broader blockchain and, and crypto landscape. What makes this, you know, a good bet? Okay, hi, thank you for having me here. Firstly, LOC is a blockchain infrastructure that we are building, we are emphasizing on like POV, the point of delivery system. At the same time, we're having not only the infrastructure itself, we're building the whole ecosystem, including our own DApp team called Thesis. Also, we have our own funds called Blue Hill. We are helping with a lot of our partnerships and the communities at the same time. It's kind of like Ethereum, but a provider providing a better, like user-friendly, a more developer-friendly whole ecosystem thing. Now, it was trading around 12 cents as of February, but now it's down to closer to one cent. How long can you continue to operate without widespread mainstream use of blockchain technology? Yeah, actually, I, I, this is a really good question. Right now, we all know the market is kind of bad at this time. Like everyone is worrying about the price, but actually, it's kind of a great period of time for a legit uh, project like us because the market has swashed down all of those like scammy project uh, all of those projects was not really focusing on the technology and not really focusing on the social value but project like IOSC and the other project we're really trying to build some social value will stay in the market despite of this really bad market thing like we're not not worried about the price we're not worried about those things at all all we want to bring is some like really social value project to the world. So are any customers using your product yet? If so, how many? Uh, yes, we are having some partnerships right now, although our main net network will be launched at the end of this year or uh, maybe at the beginning of next year. But right now we have a lot of like project partnerships going on right now where there are definitely a lot of use cases right now. Like for example, last week we have a partnership with the, uh, uh, with the charity company called Mantra. Like they are helping the children in Yunnan province. Like each of the sunglasses you bought from them will donate one pair of glasses Glasses to the children in Yunnan province. And definitely there is a trust gap between the community and the charity company. And then we are helping them to put all this transaction on our blockchain so that people exactly know that the, the money they donate to the charity will go specifically, specifically to a children in Yunnan province. So we are trying to use the blockchain technology to cover the the trust gap between the charity company and the communities. Now, the majority of people working in crypto are men. The majority of wealth held in crypto is held by men. Uh, I'm curious what it's been like for you to navigate the blockchain industry as a woman in the C-suite and, and whether you think that experience will change for other women. Uh, that's, that's really an interesting question. Like at the beginning, it's definitely a more like a men-dominated industry, because there are so many tech involved and things like that. It definitely brings us some difficulties at the first time, but it's changing to a kind of a pressure in a good way that we know women in blockchain industry should keep learning. We should keep learning not only about what's happening on the society, but also learning all the tech about the whole blockchain thing. Like with more and more talented like women coming to the blockchain world, it's definitely changing the manpower society. But that's actually a concept of blockchain. Like the concept of the blockchain is to, is to build a more equally, more social friendly environment that genders, like races, like the social status shouldn't be a factor at all.